out like one of the kids today where you're like, time me. <laughs> like, I'm gonna oh, pick yeah. up at least toys, time me. See how fast, I'm gonna show you how fast I can do it. <laughs> it was fast. I was out of breath. <laughs> we'll show you, we'll show you how fast, fast Diana can pick up her living room coming up. <laughs> Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom, and on these Sunday mornings, so glad to be joined by my twin sister, Diana, where we take a few minutes just to talk about life and faith and simple living. So if faith videos aren't for you, that is okay, skip right over, and we will see you during the week when we're talking about tips and tricks for simplifying your house. So, yeah. but speaking of simplifying houses, it has been fun to be on this journey with Diana now. Yeah. So. See, Dawn was so gracious. She had four kids before me, so she learned like all the mom tricks and everything, and then all the simplifying tricks. Yeah. So I have reaped so many rewards <laughs> as a result of that, and so we have been. We've just been working toward. I don't know. I, I don't think I could. I don't think I could call myself a minimalist yet, but definitely a minimal lifestyle. And the thing that I've noticed, so Adley's uh, 16 months now, so very mobile, you know, has some toys, likes to play. And um, what I've noticed is by having our home highly simplified, picking up at the end of the day goes really fast mm -hmm. and it feels really good like because in the time it takes for Princeton to put her down I can like kind of wipe down the kitchen you know wash our couple of dishes and then also pick up the living room and like then we have this like peaceful yeah. retreat where we get to relax and just recharge and reconnect a little after the day yeah and about a week and a half ago I did a video on toys and are they causing more harm than good so here's the truth I recorded that video three times because it is a message that is so important to me but I'm so aware of not offending people and in the past toys have been very controversial but as you research this and I linked to, I'll link to the research down here below again toys are made by big companies and marketed to our kids to be this yeah. awesome thing and unfortunately they actually are now we're realizing they're sometimes leading to addictive behaviors. They're causing our kids not to cope with their feelings of boredom. Like kids are actually meant to feel bored and then figure out something to do about it, yeah. <laughs> right? And as parents so often now, we're kind of jumping in and shortcutting yeah. the process. And so um, so I would highly encourage you, if you still have kids in the house, school age kids, just try boxing up like 95% of their toys. It doesn't even matter which ones you leave. Don't even worry about open-ended or whatever. Kids will play with anything. Yeah. Leave 5%, box up the rest, tell them it's okay. They're just in storage. Yeah. And see if they miss them because we've never pulled anything. One combine, I think. Others, we have never pulled anything back out with four kids. And so... I mean, Anthony's favorite toy right now is a bowl and a baby spoon. Like, she yeah. carries it around the house, she mixes <laughs> things. Yeah. I don't even know what she's doing, you yeah. know? And, and what we did too is we cleared out our lower cupboards or or only kept like the Tupperware kind of stuff down mm -hmm. there so that they are things that she can play with. Yeah. And that's part of her, those are her toys. Like, yeah. and that honestly, because our home is simple, we had the space to be able to do that right. rather than like, I don't know, I was just very adverse to the baby locks and like, because I felt like I was always locked out. Not the baby. Right, right. <laughs> or you go to yeah. someone's home and you don't know how theirs operate and stuff. And yep. so I was like, you know what? Let's just keep this easy. We'll just baby proof the home. And you know, and it's something that then uh, she's occupied all the time. Yeah. So. And one thing that I've noticed that's really interesting is my husband growing up in India, uh, he and his sisters are really the most generous people that I know. And I think, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I think they had like one doll. Mm -hmm. And then marbles. They would play like marbles out in the yard, but they would, and they would play, play cricket. They were always playing with the neighborhood kids. I don't know, as, as you've kind of been digging into the toy stuff, and that's another thing that researchers have found is that the more kids have, the more they actually tend to be selfish or hold on to their things or possessive. Mm -hmm. and, and I've noticed that in my life. And we grew up very modestly, mm -hmm. but even sometimes I'll find myself being like, no, that's mine. And yeah. I'm like, Oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, and then I watch my husband and his sisters and they're so gracious and they'll give you anything. And, yeah. And so I feel like I've actually seen the fruit of that. And so mm -hmm. even that, even Adley's toys, I mean, I don't know, they just collect. Somehow yeah. we have way more than I thought even intended, we ever right? would. Yeah. yeah. And, but they all fit in that bench, which has been huge um, and great, a great storage solution for us. And so we try to keep it simple. Yeah. Well, and I actually forgot to mention in the video then too, I think I mentioned it the first time I recorded it, but um, that the kid's teacher actually noticed. And she said, your kids play a lot, don't they? And I was like, 
I, at first I thought I was in yeah. trouble and I'm like, oh no, that's a good thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah. And she was like, she's like, I can see a stark contrast in the kids that are occupied by screens versus the ones that play because she said kids that play are, she's like, it's so easy to get them engaged. They're very interested in what it is. They ask more questions. They're more in awe of the world around them. And she said they also are able to let things roll off their back more. They see the learning um, process as trial and error you know we try things to work some work some don't and she said we're kids that are more occupied with screens are a little less forgiving of that process and so i was just like well wow. i know it can be hard because i mean so again at least 16 months and so i've been putting her in her high chair while i'm doing my makeup because otherwise she wants to hold all of it <laughs> and like this morning she started just screaming like she was, didn't want to be in her high chair you know and i kind of had that revelation where i was like Oh, you're actually fine. <laughs> you know, first baby, you just tend to be really yep. responsive. And right. I was like, you know, for you to just sit there for you, for a few minutes is going to be okay. Yeah. And I, because in I her way, she was telling you she was bored. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, you'll yeah. figure something out. She yeah. loves her toes. Like she finds her toes in the car. <laughs> and so, you know, and so I think as parents, like we do, we respond really quickly mm -hmm. to some of the border, you know, the boredom pangs and, you know, yeah. cries and stuff that we hear, but let, you know, letting kids like wrestle with that tension a little bit and knowing that they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So, well, I wanted to, we had something just, the Lord just really provided for us in a, a really cool way. And so I wanted to just share that story and kind of bring some encouragement. And so I'm really fortunate that I get to work like three quarters time, but it's Wednesday through Sunday. So I only have childcare Wednesday through Friday and then Princeton's with Adley a little bit on the weekends and everything. And so I feel really fortunate because I kind of feel like I get the best of both worlds, at least for now. Maybe when there's more kids, I'll stay home more. But for now, this is kind of the hybrid solution that we have. And so, and we've also been really fortunate to have in-home childcare and have a nanny. And uh, our original nanny uh, moved on. And uh, you know, when you have that person who's trusted and loved and you're like, like, how will we find anyone else that's this good and this trusted and and um, and so it ended up being a really difficult process where we just weren't finding people that we were comfortable with and that who really fit what we were looking for and so finally I was on my way into work and I just sat in the car before I went in and I just wrote down like on the back of a flyer or something I just wrote down exactly what we were looking for and I was like Lord you are faithful. I've mm -hmm. seen it so many times in my life. And this is the desire of our heart. This is what we really want for our daughter. And so will you provide this for us? And it took, I think it took like two more weeks. So it wasn't instant. I mean, now looking back, that's not that long. In that time when you're like <laughs> lining up temporary care and taking time off work and everything. Oh my goodness. And training in new people and everything. It felt like a long time. But the Lord provided the most beautiful, wonderful, gracious, mature uh, individual who lives in our neighborhood. I mean, it just even exceeded. I didn't even think to write that on the right, list. Right, right. You know, and, and so, I mean, it just reminded me of this passage. This is Matthew. Matthew 7 um, and Jesus is telling his disciples so Matthew 7 7 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives the one who seeks find and to the one who knocks it will be open which one of you if his son asks him for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will give him a serpent if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And sometimes I think we just feel like, oh, it's not a spiritual issue or it's not mm. life and death or whatever. Yeah. And so we don't even think to go to the Lord, you know, and to be specific and to say, Lord, this is really what I'm hoping for. Mm -hmm. And I found, I don't know, there's something about writing it down yeah, and just really and dating it. And just, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just, I don't know if it increases my expectation or it just kind of ups the ante a little yeah, bit. Like, right. okay, Lord, it's official. you know, like this yeah. is it. Um, but I just want to encourage you today if there's something in your life it could be something very small maybe it's a friend mm -hmm. you know maybe you're like Lord I just really could use a good friend yeah like totally write it down I know for a spouse and another time you know we, and we can link to my wedding story and stuff this is huge for my my husband and and I had an exact list of what I was looking for and, and the Lord more than provided and so well and I know for myself it's it's easy to believe it for other people. So yeah. of course, it, does it surprise us to hear that Diana wrote down her list and she got her nanny? Of course not, right? You know, we're like, you're a pastor. 
Like, yeah. doesn't that just add an angry bump your request, like, up the list? And so it has taken me a while to have the same faith for myself because it was so much easier for me to yeah. believe in that for other people. So take but the I time. Think, to yeah, me. and that, that's where this encouragement to, he's a good father. Yeah. You know, like, which one of you would give your son a stone? Yeah. You wouldn't. No. Like, you wouldn't. I mean, maybe I'll leave Adley in the high chair for a few minutes, <laughs> and I think that happens to all of us. Yeah. And that's where we get, we can lose faith or trust a little bit because we feel like <laughs> we've been crying for a while. Yeah. And <laughs> nothing is happening, yeah. you know, but he knows yeah. what's good for us, too. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I just wanted to encourage you in that today. I was blown away. I've seen it before, but it just, when the Lord delivers like that, it's yeah, just so it's awesome. beautiful and it's so him. Like you yeah. just, you, yeah, you can't deny it. It's so, yeah. so father, I ask that you would help each of us, Lord, to have the faith to ask Lord God, to be specific Lord. And then to just place our trust in you because you are a good father. You are so good and you always give good gifts to your children. And Lord, for those who have been asking, you know, this is actually an active tense where it says seek and you will find. It's seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking. So Lord, give us the endurance right now to seek and keep on seeking. To ask and keep on asking. Lord, to place our trust fully in you, Lord God, and not in ourselves or in other provision, Lord God, but to place our trust in you as a good father. So I bless each of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.